I think we're going to go ahead and just get started. Okay. Um, so I'd like to thank you all for breaking the weather and making it out here this evening. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dr. Eric. He's one of the three amazing chiropractors we have here in the office. He's very passionate about education, which is why he is here this evening, um, to help you all learn a little bit more about um, the holiday hangover. and want to get a little more energy. So if you could all help me welcome Dr. Eric. everybody for showing up today. I know the weather up there is not the funnest right now. So a little bit about me because I know I think most of you have probably already heard this story but I personally I believe everything happens for a reason and the reason I'm here in front of you today is the direct result of something that happened 16, about 16 years ago now. At the time I was a full-time student I was commuting from Escanaba to Marquette five days a week going to school working as a store manager at McDonald's full-time and like a lot of people I had pain in my upper back right about here and it was just my constant pain. It didn't really keep me from doing anything but it was always there. And then one morning I woke up, I was literally in tears. I could not get out of bed. I was crying. And then she hit the phone on my nightstand. Who do you guys think I called? Mom. Yeah. That's what this one before. I called my mom. I called mom and my mom, I don't know what's going on. I can't get out of bed. So mom rushes over. She gets me, brings me to the hospital, brings me to the ER. What do you think they told me? Yeah. Yeah, strain some muscles, strain some leg. Here, take these flexor, I'll take this leg, and then you'll be fine. So I took their drugs, and I was going up for about a week while the prescription lasts, and it, it made me feel better. I felt good. But then the drugs ran out, and my pain came back. But it was no longer like the normal pain that it was my constant pain, and I could hack it. It was like, oh, this really sucks. I'm 20 years old, and my back hurts a lot. What am I going to do? That's when we started looking into a different kind of doctor. I met Dr. Brian, he's a chiropractor, and he changed my life. Uh, he did x-rays, a very thorough evaluation like we do over in our office, and he showed me how I have a scoliosis, my spine, which should be going straight up and down, it curves off to the side like that, right up where I have a lot of my pain. And he said, you know, I'm not going to make this 100% perfect, but I can make this a lot better. And it was literally the first adjustment I ever had, it was like a light switch, was like, I felt amazing. I was like, wow, this is awesome. And he said, no, you might get sore later on, put some ice on it, we'll get you back in tomorrow, we'll check you again, and I'm glad I listened to him, because about well, three hours later, I felt like a train again. And I was like, oh man, he had to warn me, I probably wouldn't have went back with that. And I, over the next few months, I noticed not only was my pain gone and staying away, I was sleeping better. I had more energy. Just the overall quality of my life was a heck of a lot better. And I started looking at my life, and I was, I was the professional college student at that point. I changed my major about 20 times. And uh, I was going into special education, come from a family teacher, so I was looking at what they deal with day in, day out. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do that my whole life. So I started talking to Dr. Brian. I said, you know, you gave me my life back. I think I want to be a chiropractor. He got really excited and he started giving me recommendations of schools to look at and things and changed my major one more time. And I'll never forget the day I went home and told my, my parents, uh, I was saying, yeah, I think I want to be a chiropractor. My dad just gets up and walks up to the garage and my mom's like, well, what does that entail? I'm like, I got to go to pre-med. She's like, you've done all education with like English and languages and arts and education. I'm like, what, what does that mean? It's like, probably another four years of undergrad. And, uh, but I don't regret it for a second. It was another nine years of school almost, and here I am today. I, I became a chiropractor because gave me my life back, and I wanted to share that with everybody, okay? So, many of you are, are uh, frequent flyers for these workshops. Every month we do a different body signals workshop. And we're talking about body signals, we're referring to the symptoms that we often see in our office that bring people in originally. And we refer to them as body signals, which we'll delve into here more in a little bit because it's our body's way of trying to communicate to us something's going on. So we have a problem that we can't adapt to and we need to find a solution for it. So part of the reason we do these workshops is help to educate people to be more in tune and listen to their body and be able to tell what's going on. We have a strike with one I think so. Okay. Well, seven, one and uh, so this week, this month, we're talking about the holiday hangover. So recovering from the holidays. So the holidays, yes, they're a stressful time, right? Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. We get a raise of hands if we agree. You know, we ask, what do we ask everybody when they come in for the adjustments, people that are coming to get in their eyes? What's the first thing we always say? What's the good news today? The week after the holidays are over, what do you think everybody's good news is? Around? Probably about 80% of the people's good news is. I made it through the week, I made it through the holidays. So it's, it's, the holidays are a really stressful time. We have our limited resources, our time, our energy, our finances, they're all taxed even more during the holiday season. So, this, this chart really tells it all. Here we have a graph plotting the frequency of cardiovascular events, heart attacks, 
that ultimately kill people. And we plot. This is over a 30-year trend. Look at where the peak is. Not coincidentally, right between Christmas and New Year. That's where most people are. So our stress levels are the highest at this point, and that's where more people are dying of heart attacks. That really tells it all. That's, that's when we have most of the stress in our lives, that's when systems start to break down. And a lot of times, the heart attacks are the first symptom that somebody has that something's wrong. It's actually the heart attack that often kills the person. So, the holiday hangover. A lot of times when we get through something that's stressful, I'm not there. Claudia. Claudia, nice to meet you, Claudia. I'm glad you guys made it in. So, so, the holiday hangover. A lot of times we deal with a lot of these kind of symptoms, especially after we've dealt with a stressful event, such as the holidays, or like, if you think of the back in the student days when we had exams and stuff like that, a lot of times you got through your exam period, it was great the week after exams, that's when you got sick or something broke down because that's when your body's pushed beyond that, that adapting. Looks like everybody showed up. Awesome. Maybe that people right here. Glad you guys made it. So we just started, all you guys missed was the introduction, so glad you made it. Okay, yeah, made it. That's it. Everybody's here now. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So hi, Dr. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. Brian, Brian. Okay. Okay. So basically, we're talking about the holiday hangover. As you refer to it, it's the stress that we deal with throughout the holidays, and then the crash that we typically get after the holidays. So recovering our holiday, our energy after the stressful holidays. And a lot of people experience symptoms like these, exhaustion, cold, flu, headaches, digestion problems, weight gain, irritability, pain, anxiety, things like that, depression. And just a minute ago, I was talking, every month we do one of these body signal workshops, and we refer to them as body signals, because it's the body's way of trying to communicate to us that something's wrong, something's not working like it's supposed to, and we need to find a solution to it. And the funny thing about body signals, the symptoms that we see, does anybody here remember so I know some of you have got this step before. How much of your nervous system is responsible for telling you you hurt? Anyway. How much? Seven. Seven? Seven or seven? No, seven. Yeah, really, six to eight percent, seven percent. About that much of it tells your brain it hurts. So think about that. We've got a nerve here. It's a big old cross section of a nerve. That's about how much of your brain or your nervous system relays the pain signal. So we can compress, we can irritate, we can do things to that nerve, but if we're not lighting up those pain fibers, often we never feel it as pain at all, which we're going to talk about more in a second here. So the things that often bring people to us to get checked are the things that they feel. It's like the tip of the iceberg, that little itty bitty bit sticking out of the top. But what's really going to sink the boat? All that wounding mass below it, right? And if I went through and I chiseled off, that tip, got rid of it completely, got rid of the symptom as it were, what's still there? Yeah, all that stuff down there. And so what do I do, what happens? If I chisel that off, that's gone now, we have no more pain, we have no more symptom, and I ignore that, and I come back like six months later, what's happening? Yeah, not only do we have that back, but that's gotten bigger. So that's a really good, the iceberg is a really good analogy for the pain and how the nervous system and pain aren't responsible for it being an indicator of it or healthy or not. And it all boils down to the wellness continuum. Many of you have seen this chart before, okay? This is, we are all on this continuum at some point. We're either on this side or we're on this side. This is ultimately neutral. There's no internal symptoms at all that's whatsoever. Now sometimes you get some signs of something being wrong. Like maybe I've got some stiffness or I notice my head's not training quite as far or something, but that doesn't really hurt, that doesn't really bother me. Then we ignore it for a while, and then it starts to bother us, it starts to hurt us. We start getting into the symptoms phase of things. And that's typically where I meet people the first time, and when they're in the symptoms state. But what's often the thing that we reach for when we start getting those aches and pains and stuff like that? Yeah, medication. So what's the medication do? Does it fix the problem? It gets rid of the symptoms, right? So we're ultimately taking that medication, we're chiseling off the top of that iceberg, but we're, we're blocking all of that, we're ignoring all of that. So next thing you know, we don't feel those symptoms, now we're getting to disability, and it catches us out of the blue because this thing slowly crept up 
about medicine, not only were we covering up our bodies, we had to try and tell our brain, hey, something's wrong, I got a stress here I can't adapt to. Now we're in the disability realm, okay? So the whole point of these workshops is to help us make decisions to push us this way, to the right side, where everybody wants to go. I guess it's your guys right, my left. So that's what it's all about. When you look at the steps of the wellness side of it, it's awareness, it's education, it's growth, it's making decisions. And the other thing about this continuum is we are all on this, and not one of us is static on here. We're all moving, we're all making decisions that are going to push us either further this way or further that way. And the other thing is our decisions eventually lead to momentum. So not only are we making decisions that might push us for that way, we're continually making decisions. So now we're, we've got momentum heading in that direction. And we have momentum heading in that direction. What's, what's the law of, what is it, one of Newton's laws where an object in motion stays in motion? It takes more resistance to try to stop that and push it back to the wellness side. So the whole point of these workshops is to help you guys make decisions to push us this way, stop us from going this way and move that way. So there's got to be a better way to approach things than just trying to cover up our symptoms and ignoring the problems. So we like to set a new type of premise, a new type of way to think about health in our office. The first is, it's normal to be healthy. What do you guys think? Is, it, is, is being healthy normal or abnormal? Yeah, we're all designed to be healthy. All of us have all the genes. I mean, there are rare exceptions, a small percentage of the population that unfortunately they get a bad shape and they have some kind of genetic disposition to not express perfect health. But over 99% of us possess all the genes, all the material we need to express perfect health at all times. And we've got generations and generations and generations that come before us that are proof of that. It's, but unhealthy is becoming a new norm. It's not normal, but it's becoming a new norm of the decisions that we make. The second premise is there's a lot of smarter stupid. What do you guys think? It's crazy smart, right? All the, all the things you guys are doing right now without even really thinking about it. You're all breathing, right? Your hearts are all beating. You got the endocrine system pushing all these hormones and stuff all over the place. You can hear the vibrations going through the air as I flap my gums and make my vocal cords vibrate. You can understand the words I'm saying, interpret them into something, and learn something out of it. Our bodies are amazing, amazing things. They're incredible. And they heal themselves. So what controls everything in the body? Your nervous system. Every organ. You guys know the little baby going to a sperm and an egg cell, they unite. What's the first thing that develops when those things, the first organ? You guys think? It's not the spine. It's the, the brain. The brain is the first organ to form. Followed by the spinal cord that branches off and then all the nerves start to branch off that, and then everything else starts to develop from there on up. Okay, so your nervous system is calling all the shots. Every process in your body from the day you're conceived to the day you're born, that's being controlled by your nervous system, your inborn innate intelligence. What protects your nervous system? It's the hardest thing your body makes. Bone, yeah. So your smart body, we got our skull, cases our brain. The most important organ in the body is our brain. It's the only organ in the body that's encased in solid bones, like our helmet. Then we have ring after ring after ring after ring of solid bones protecting our spinal cord. Because your body's smart. It's trying to protect its most valuable organs. And we have ribs and stuff that protect a lot of other really important things. But the spinal, the nervous system, the spinal, the spinal cord, and the, the brain itself are the only two things that are completely wrapped in solid bone. So your spine is like your suit of armor. And then, here's a silly question. You guys think life is stressful? Do <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever think I get anybody that's like, no, life is not stressful? <laughs> Raise your hand if your life is stressful. <laughs> Raise your hand, other hand, if it's more stressful this year than it was last year. <laughs> Way up in the air, you think next year is even going to be more stressful. And life is just getting more and more in an unnaturally stressful. When we talk about unnaturally, think back to like the hunter-gatherer days when our normal cycle was like you wake up in the morning and the sun's coming up, you go out, you're active until the sun's at its peak, then you go home, you're taking a nap, and then the sun starts going down, you're all active again, and then the sun's going down, that's when you go into bed and things like that. That's like the normal life cycle that we were designed to have. Now what do we do? We got people working third shifts, we got people getting like three hours of sleep a night, living off caffeine and energy drinks, 
the sugar and all this stuff, we do really unnatural things, and it has a detriment on our health. So that's why unhealthy is becoming a new norm, but normal is healthy. And there's three types of stress. All these things lead to stress. All the stress, three types. There's thoughts, there's traumas, there's toxins. So mental stress, that's really one of the kickers of all three of them. Because mental stress causes physical responses. Has anybody ever been really stressed about something? You feel it all in your, or maybe when some of you are going to be driving home and you're white knuckling it because those roads are going to be crappy out there, that kind of thing. Or like, I like this example. You're driving along, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you see the lights flashing behind you. You're getting pulled over. What happens? Can't find it sitting right there in plain view and things like that. And that popped into mind. You just turn on some lights. That's all your thoughts doing that to you, creating a physical response in your body. Then we have toxins, what we put into our body. So the stuff that we're exposed to, like the pollutants, car exhausts, and things like that, but also the things we choose to put in, the foods we put into our body, the beverages we put in our body, the, the, the sources of nutrition that we have, things like your processed grains or refined sugars that are just toxic to our body, which we're going to talk about more here in a minute. And then there's traumas. Which this is usually what a lot of people think of when they come and see us, when they're like, oh, I didn't do anything. I didn't slip and fall. I didn't do anything. I didn't get hit by a truck or anything like that. What happened? But really, the traumas are broken into two categories. There's macro traumas, there's micro traumas. Macro traumas are like the big ones, like I slipped and I fell on the ice and hurt myself. The micro traumas are the ones that are the more sinister ones, because we don't really think about it. It's the sitting at a cubicle all day long behind the computer, or sitting on my cell phone, like you see all the kids doing days walking down the street like that. All these micro things that we do over and over again repetitively, and the body slowly starts to say, okay, this is how it's got to be. i got to adapt to this, even though that adaptation is detrimental to your overall function. So let's talk about the first one, your thoughts. So the holidays. What are we all thinking about during the holidays? Family. And money. Yeah, that's one of them. That's one of the stressors. Time. Do you guys get invited to parties and stuff? Maybe you get invited to some parties you don't maybe want to go to, but then you kind of feel obligated to go to, and now I gotta bring a side dish too, or I gotta bring dessert, or all these things. And next thing you know, you're just feeling burnt out, and that's your thoughts that are doing that to you. Or maybe, like uh, like my father and my mother split up a while ago, okay? My dad, it's been over 10 years, around the holidays, he still gets really depressed. Or like I we have people that we have loved ones that have lost. Right. You think around the holiday times, and that's the time you think about family, and it reminds you of the other people that you lost. So our thoughts are something that is always a source of stress, but we have basically four limited resources, and your body's an economist as far as trying to conserve these. There's time, there's energy, there's focus, and there's money. And in today's modern, unstressed or unnaturally stressful lifestyle, all of these are taxed. But all of these are taxed even more around the holiday. And we have a stress response. So this is what happens physiologically when we're having a stress response. Your body doesn't really differentiate between the stress of, I'm, I'm stressed out because I gotta get all these gifts for everybody, I gotta get all these parties and stuff like that, versus the stress of like I'm being chased by a tiger in the woods or something like that. So it responds in the same way to stress. We have things like an elevation in blood pressure, we have an elevation in heart rate, we have increased muscle tone, especially in our extremities. Because you think about it, your body's preparing itself, I gotta fight, fight this tiger to the death, even if there's not technically a tiger there. Our digestion gets upset. We have decreased serotonin levels. Our sensory systems are up. We're more alert. We're more frightful. We're more anxious about things. Things like your immune response is down-regulated. It's, it's turned, if I'm fighting a bacterial infection, and my body's got to decide, am I going to fight this infection, or am I going to fight this tiger? It's going to choose to fight the tiger before it chooses to fight the infection. Because if I don't win the tiger fight, then it doesn't really matter if I have an infection. Your body's smart, and it's trying to allocate its resources where it needs it the most. We have things like upper upgrading intake of blood sugar, so there's more blood available in the bloodstream. And we have things like our, our uh, uh, cholesterol, our good and our black cholesterol levels fluctuate to help with clotting things and stuff like that. So your body's prepared for uh, if I get a wound, I gotta heal that wound. It's not necessarily thinking about it. I gotta digest that meal like the same. Things like your sex drive go down because that's probably not what you're thinking about if you're fighting that type, okay? And all of these responses are how your body responds to stress. And then when we're in a prolonged state of elevated stress, this becomes a normal. 
What's one of the causes of diabetes? Yeah, too much sugar in the blood. The thing's not working right. So we have chronic elevated blood sugar because we're always stressed out. What's another cause of heart disease? Heart attacks. Things like too much crud in the blood. Things like cholesterol, stuff like that. So all these things that make us more prone to these attacks from these chronic things, like we saw that chart with the heartburn or the heart attacks, they peak right between Christmas and New Year's, right in through there. So I want to be very, very pragmatic about how we approach this. The things that we need to do, the things that we need to slow down on, the things that we need to stop doing. So what we need to do, think for recovery. And now, I think you guys, you guys were at my last one, right? You're coming? You're gonna find there's a lot of overlap in this presentation. Because the things that the last seminar we did was preparing yourself for the holidays, as getting ready for the holiday stress. Recovering from the holiday stress is very similar to preparing for the holiday stress, okay? So first, think to recover. You can choose your attitude. You can't necessarily choose the things that you're encountering. I can't help if my little brother decides to be a jerk one day and tick me off or something like that. But I can choose consciously how I respond to that, how I think about that, and how I respond to that. So we can have an attitude, a, a mindset, a connection, acceptance, respect, unconditional love, grace. Those are things that we can make the conscious decision to focus on to improve our mental health. We need to sleep. Who here, how many hours a night are we supposed to sleep? Eight. Yes. Eight. Some people, seven, eight, you know, some people may argue six. Yeah. We're going to say eight. Okay, eight hours of restful, good quality sleep is what we're looking for. So things, protect your rhythm. Go into bed around the same time. Make sure you're waking up around the same time. What time does, we all make fun of Dr. Matt. You guys know Dr. Matt. A lot of you know Dr. Matt. Dr. Matt goes to bed at like 8 o'clock every night, and he's up at like 3.30 in the morning because he works out in the morning. That's when he first goes to work. That's his rhythm. And we always tease him, like he's at, uh, down at the expo down, in, and he's going to be there past his bedtime. And we always make fun of him. He's got to do something that's past 8 o'clock. It's like, oh, Dr. Matt, you're staying up past your bedtime. But he's got that rhythm now. He's, he protects that, that rhythm. And I go to bed at the same time, I wake up at the same time, because it helps my body get into a groove of things. So early to bed, early rise, it makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, I think. Is that how that saying goes? Yeah. Yeah. Defects. So our tablets, our phones. Do you guys know that the light that comes out of those devices stimulates a part of your brain called the pineal gland that inhibits the melatonin production? So you're, you're sitting there looking at your phone and stuff as you're trying to fall asleep. And I know I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I do it sometimes. And then I'm not falling asleep. Because I'm exciting my brain with this unnatural light. My brain's confused and thinking that, hey, it's daytime. It's time for me to be alert and active. And that's why I can't fall asleep. So eat that. So at least a half hour, ideally an hour before you want to go to bed. Taking naps. Back way in the hunter gatherer days, it was normal for us to nap when the sun was the highest. But it's like, hey, I don't want to be out in that hot sun, sweating, sweating my butt off. I'm just going to go home, take a nap, wait for the sun to go down a little bit, and then I'll go up and be active again. Like the CA stuff. Yeah. I used to do that in my old office. I had a three hour lunch break. I took a half hour nap every day. It was beautiful. And she would have three hour lunch break at our office. So I take a nap every night. But yeah, take a nap. It doesn't have to be like a three hour nap. A 20 minute power nap yeah, sure. gets you a lot of benefit. Because your body does yeah. your body knows. Okay, it's programmed. I'm going to take my power nap here. It gets into that deep sleep really fast and it's focusing on recuperating some things. Uh, don't overcommit yourself. So no is a love word. So you got that person that you're, maybe the co-worker or something, like, they're inviting you to that, that get-together that you don't really want to go to. It's okay to say no. Sometimes it's better for us to say no, and you got to respect your own personal limits and boundaries. And then check your expectations. Has anybody ever tried to plan like the perfect party or the perfect dinner? What happens every time you try to plan the perfect dinner? Murphy's Law comes in. Everything falls apart. Nothing is perfect, and it's very, very stressful. So you just kind of roll with the punches. Then the toxins. Eat for recovery. We don't want to be starving ourselves, which I know we talked about that last time. This, you, you're aware that I do things like water fasts and things like that. That's a completely different thing. And actually, we're thinking about doing a workshop on the water fast because there's, there's a lot of information that we can spend on that. But ideally, you do not want to be starving yourself. You want to be eating the, the right amount of calories every day. Now, you want good quality calories. Uh, Dr. Matt loves to say, if you can eat 2,000 calories at McDonald's, or you can eat 
2,000 calories of broccoli, is that the same thing? No, no it's quite different, right? We want to make sure it's slightly nutritious. So your battle is won at the cash register, it's not won at the refrigerator. You buy it and bring it home, what are you going to do with it? You're going to eat it. You don't buy it at the grocery store, you can't eat it. Even if you're at home and you want it, you're like, oh, I wish I had bought that bag of potato chips. It's not there, you can't eat it. So don't buy it. Don't drink the calories. So not only are we talking about the adult beverages, but look at it. I mean, how many calories are in one of those Starbucks or Big Coffee these days? 507. Yeah, or you look at like a thing of soda or something like that. And then you look at it and it says, oh, I don't know, like, does anybody have any? I don't get all the soda here, fortunately. Uh, well, Dr. Pepper's got like 64 grams of sugar. Exactly. And then they do that tricky thing where there's like, okay, one serving's this amount, and you look at it, but then one serving the, or the whole bottle is 2.5 servings, so it's like, oh, I'm only getting my 30 grams of sugar or something like that. And it's like, but who drinks like that much of the bottle? You can drink the whole thing, you can get the 600 something. Uh, boy, the white stuff. We're not talking about the illegal white stuff. Well, that's <laughs> not something we want anyone either. We're talking about like the processed flour and sugar. The two white powders. Very, very pro-inflammatory. They create a stress response in our body. And that's becoming something that's a lot to fill yourself with healthy foods. So we want basically unlimited vegetables. You know what vegetables you want. It's a vegetable, it's safe. You need as much of it as you want. You want plenty of leaf cut natural meats. I do like the grass beds, your organics, and things like that. Those are not come for our hormones and antibiotics and things like that. Uh, some fruits, some nuts, some seeds. You gotta be a little bit careful with the fruits because of the sugar content in them and things like that. They will spike your blood sugar just like candy or something. Uh, and then no refined carbs and sugars. Just cut them out. They're really no good for any of us. And what's one of the hardest things to do during the holidays? Diet. Yeah. We're at the office, we get all those lovely goody trays that every bakes bakes for us, the donuts, the cookies, all that stuff. We love them. And there's a lot more available around the holiday times. So, supplementations. Supplementations are a really good thing because Ideally, we want people getting their nutrition out of whole food sources, but it's becoming a very difficult thing to do these days. In fact, with how the soils are depleted and stuff like that, getting magnesium and stuff like that, it's really tough to do because it's just not available in the environment anymore. So it's a good idea to supplement that thing. It's like probiotics, helping that gut flora to uh, stay strong, prevent things like leaky gut, especially when we're passing with things like your processed grains and flowers and, and uh, sugars and stuff like that. Uh, vitamin D, very important, especially here in Michigan in the winter months. We don't get good, we, get, we make vitamin D naturally if we have good sun exposure. But right now we're not getting any sun. And even if the sun was shining out during the winter months, we're actually the how the world is positioned when the sun is, we don't get the direct sunlight to stimulate that vitamin D production as much as we do in the summer months or as they get out the equator. So a good vitamin D supplement is a, almost a requirement here in Michigan. Uh, these ones are really good, good anti, uh, Antioxidants and things like that. Fish oil. It's like a modern serum for anti-inflammatory distress. So fish oil helps with anti-inflammation. So we live very full inflammatory lives these days. Getting a good quality fish oil supplement is highly recommended. There was one out there, uh, something like that, that was able to buy. That's the other tricky thing you gotta think about supplements, because they're not well regulated in this country. So you wanna make sure you're getting good quality. Like at our office we carry supplements. We, we carry pharmaceutical grade supplements. So we, we only sell the real deal. We're, I mean, we, we do nutritional consults with people and stuff, and I've had a few people go like, oh yeah, I took your advice, I went and got those supplements. And I'm like, well, where'd you get them? I went to Walmart and I got the buy one, get one free type things. And unfortunately those ones are not, supplements are not well regulated. And Buying the cheapest one out there is usually the worst idea because you're not really getting what you think you're getting and the quantities that you're getting in. And unfortunately, they don't even regulate these facilities that they manufacture things in. So like, things like rats running around and stuff like that, you might be getting some of that stuff. Oh. So. Hey, Eric, what, did you, what, what does the asterisk behind that fish oil mean? Fish oil is one of the biggest ones on there. Like if you were going to decide, I want to decide which one of these I should be taking, I would say fish oil is number one, vitamin D is probably number two, probiotics probably number three. <laughs> okay. Omega. Omega, yeah. Yeah, omega-3 fatty acids, your omega-6 fatty acids, that's all in a good quality fish oil. Exactly, yeah. And that helps protect your bloodstream, or your, your blood vessels. Yeah. No, that's what you think. Yeah, you don't want to go out and buy the cheapest ones. You want to get the good quality ones. Yeah. 
No, but it helps prevent your blood vessels. It helps with cell repair, cell membrane repair, and things like that. So it's a very, very beneficial supplement. And then there's the traumas. When we talk about the neck traumas, that do slips and falls, like get hit by a car or something like that. The spine suit of armor protects everything. Trauma, stress, leads to something called subluxation, vertebral subluxation. Can we all say that word, subluxation? Subluxation. I want it to become butter by our neck. So it's a big, fancy, million dollar word. But all it is a complex. Can anybody here, any other people that have been in my favorite product, can you explain subluxation to me? Put people on the spot. Any brave souls? Man, you guys, you guys become the most of them. <laughs>
misalignment, that nerve was pinched out by 40%. The kidney is completely shut down. How much of the nervous system is responsible for pain? Six to eight percent. Yeah, seven percent. That's just what said. That guy didn't have any pain. He didn't have any symptoms until his body started shutting down from the toxicity of the urine and poison. That's when he first started having symptoms. Because that 40 percent inclusion of that nerve, that pinching out that nerve, wasn't getting that six to eight percent that tells you pain. You got a problem here, go take care of it. So I like to tell people when I meet them, most people I meet the first time they have some kind of pain. And I like to tell them, hey, that's a good thing from the perspective. If you have pain, that's your body's way of trying to tell you. We're having a stress we can't adapt to. But it's not the be all tell all if something's healthy. And what do you guys think is the most common answer I get when I ask what's the definition of health? Pain? Sorry? No pain? Yeah, I feel good, right? I feel good. I look good. So I must be healthy, right? But what's the problem with that? What's it feel like to have heart disease? What's the first symptom of heart disease often? Heart attack. Yeah, it's often the heart attack that kills the person. What's it feel like to have early diabetes? You don't feel it at all when you first get it, right? It's when it's gone uncontrolled for a long period of time. That's when we start getting symptoms from it. And often, when we start getting the symptoms from it, it's been going on for a long time. Like uh, my girlfriend, her mom, stage five renal failure. Uh, it was uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes for a long, long time. And I was at the doctor appointment, and I brought this appointment when he told her. And he's like, hey, you're in stage five renal failure. And I'm like, how, how did this happen? And he's looking at us as if it was a shock to you, like we should have known. Her doctors have never told her she has uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes and all these things. And she lived over years and years. She didn't really have it. And she's like, talking at me, I feel fine. And I had to explain to her, well, part of your nervous system that tells your brain, hey, this hurts, is not actively being affected by this right now. So she's got some serious health problems, but she doesn't have a lot of pain associated with those health problems. So how do you know if you have a subluxation if only 6 to 8% of your nervous system will tell your brain it hurts? So I got a bone on the plate, it's pinching my nerve. But it's not hitting that six to eight percent. How do I know about it? You don't. Yeah, How could you know about it? So what we do is we check for this stuff, we look for this stuff. 75% of all subluxations are completely asymptomatic. I have this happen all the time. Someone comes in, my back is hurting. I'm checking the whole spine. I'm up here feeling around. I'm like, you feel that there? Like, yeah, the problem's down here. I know the problem's down there. But they've also got problems up here, they've got problems in there. We want to check and clear it all though, not just hit the hot button that's saying, hey, screaming at you, being like, we got pain, we're, enough, we're not adapting to the stress anymore. We want to make sure we're clearing everything out. So, we do a very thorough ev evaluation for subluxations in our office. It includes palpation. I spend a lot of time training these fingers on how to feel for these subluxations. We do some exercises where we take like a little hair, put it in the back of the textbook, and see how many pages we can feel that hair through. What do you think we would get up to? How many pages? More than that. A lot more than that. Spit out some numbers. More than that. We got to the point we would have to use blank printer paper because you could feel the little indents on the ink in the page that you, you, it would throw us off. We couldn't find the hair because you'd feel all those ink. We're talking like 250, 300. One of the instructors said he was over 450 pages when he used it. But I don't know if he really got that much. I, I personally was up over 300 pages that you could still find that hair in there. And that was back in the day where I had long hair, so everybody was always ripping my hair out, trying to be like, hey, we're bored right now, we're in philosophy class. Rip my hair out, put it in the back of the book, and say, now find it. So we also do posture evaluation. So how many remember when we were looking in the mirror, and I was like, see how this shoulder's higher, this shoulder's higher, and that hip's higher, and all that? We look at the overall posture, because posture's a window into what's going on with the spine. Okay? We do x-rays as necessary. So we actually take pictures, because the guess is, or to not see is the guess, to, to see it is to know. We want to make sure we know what's going on in there. We also do what's called instrumentation. So we do thorough analysis of the nerves that can't tell your brain it hurts to see how those are functioning. So all those scans that we do in the office that measure the activity in the muscles that support the spine, the, the thermal scan that measures how the nerves that control organs and glands and the blood vessels are functioning, all those things are help us to get the information to figure out where are the problems and what are the best solutions to the problems. So we have to get adjusted to we want to make sure our nervous system is working at 100% so our bodies can function at 100%. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? So how do we know if we have a subluxation and we don't feel it? We get checked. Come get checked. It's like 
your blood, you, you, your blood sugar. If you're a diabetic, what do you do? Check your blood sugar, right? If you have hypertension, what are you supposed to do? Check your blood, check your blood pressure, right? How do you know if it's high or low? You check it. How do you know if your blood sugar is high or low? I mean, if it's really bad, you might be feeling it. Like if you're crashing, you might feel that weak, that shaky feeling. If you're really high, you might feel that jittery feeling or something like that. But you check it. You know? Don't put it off. Procrastination. That is the number one enemy of health right now. What's the five most dangerous words when it comes to your own health? And I know we've all said it before. I know I've said it before. I'll wait till tomorrow. It's pretty, yeah, I'll, maybe it'll go away. I'll take care of it later. That kind of concept. I'm thinking back to where you guys missed my story. The reason I became a chiropractor is I had a lot of pain when I was younger. Well, it was normal pain. I had upper back pain. And uh, I was going to school full time. I bugged you for that's not going to work out about an hour commute in two days, working full time at McDonald's. Pain in my upper back, not debilitating until I woke up one morning. I was literally in bed. I was in tears. I couldn't get out of bed. Called my mom. She took me to the ER. I was like, hey, you're fine. Just take this flexor. All this like, you'll be fine. And my drugs ran out. My pain was still there. It was a lot worse. That's when I went to saw a chiropractor. And he showed me how I have a scoliosis. I have a lot of issues. And he started working with me on pregnant. And that's all I mean. Why I'm here today is he gave me my back. I wanted to share chiropractic with the rest of the world. So, Getting checked is really important, okay? Now I hear all kinds of excuses as to why I don't want to get checked. You know, I don't have the time for it. Which we can always make time when we have a health crisis, right? We have to when we have a health crisis. It's like, <coughs> I'm in bed, I have tears, I can't get out of home. I've got time. Or maybe I hear it's too expensive. That's how much is it going to cost with the insurance covers and stuff like that. I want to make an invitation to all of you that are here, especially if you haven't been checked before you haven't been in the office. I want to take that part of that out of the equation. I want to get you guys checked. And we're only going to charge 20 bucks, okay? To the full analysis. Tell patient, basically what it'll be is we'll sit down, we'll sit in the we'll have a consultation, we'll talk about what your specific health concerns are, what your specific goals are. From there, we'll do an examination. We'll see where the problems are. We'll get the instrumentation, we'll get the pictures. We'll, we'll figure out what the plan is to fix the problem. And if it can't, we'll let you know. If it can't help, we'll let you know too. But at least you got checked. Now normally this is a $290 exam, x-ray scans, everything like that. This is the only time we offer it for 20 bucks. So what I'm gonna do is, when I'm almost done here, once I'm done, and you guys are gonna be released to get dinner, Jessica's gonna come around and she's gonna offer, if you guys want to, set up that appointment. The only catch is you gotta schedule that a day because success is reserved for the action day. You guys wake up tomorrow and be like, yeah, that chiropractor's right, I should go get my spine checked. It's back to the 295, okay? If you guys have families that you want to get checked, we'll check the whole family, it's only 35 bucks. Everybody in your family, okay? Or if you guys have somebody here, this happens to me a lot. Somebody shows up to one of these workshops, they're like, Doc, I blew it. I should have had my sister here. Or I should have had my husband here. Or I should have had so-and-so here. If you guys want to buy them an exam for 20 bucks, do it. Go on. If they don't take it, they don't take it. That old saying, you can eat a horse of water, you can't make a drink. Worst case scenario, you're all 20 bucks. So, get them in and get them checked. Okay? So, yeah, get in. Set up an appointment. We'll sit down and try to get to the bottom of it. Okay? Gotcha. So, that's really all I got for you guys. Any questions about it?